iron in the soul. What's up, YouTube? This is Iron in the Soul. Back today with a very important message. Please subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my content. Let's talk about today a very important subject. And this video today comes as a direct request from a subscriber, I believe, as her name is the Queen of the South, from South Africa, I believe. And she asked about, in particular, six ways to get close to God. And so I gave her six today. And I trust this will be a blessing to you who watch this video. The first thought comes to my mind when thinking about getting close to the Most High God is Matthew 5 and verse 8. Where the scripture says that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we think about God. The first place to start is with your motive. The heart here is not referring to the organ that pumps blood, but it's referring to the innermost part of a man, of a woman. The, the source, the center of your consciousness, your motives between right and wrong. This is why King Solomon, when praying for wisdom, asked for what? A discerning heart to know right from wrong. And so your heart's where you can store wisdom or you can store up foolishness. The Bible says in Proverbs that foolishness, for example, is in the heart of a child. And so a parent's job is to you know, remove that foolishness from the heart through teaching, through instruction, through guidance, through good experiences. And so the heart is the first step here. Your motive has to be pure. There, there are some who follow God for money only, and there are those who follow God for a place of a pure heart, a place of true faith. Um, the scripture refers to Timothy's faith, who was a pastor for the church of Ephesus, as an unfeigned faith. And the word unfeigned there means sincere, genuine, or real. And so the first step in this talk is to have the right heart. Secondly, this is one you probably all are aware of, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you want, want to get close to God, you have to spend time in God's word. We can't move around that. that. That's just what it is. Point blank period. Whether you have been a believer for one year or whether you've been a believer like myself for 20 years, it doesn't matter. The scripture says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. So the word of God, is, of course, is our source of truth. It, it is referred to as a um, two-edged sword in Hebrews 4 and verse 12. And so the sword of the spirit in another verse. And so the word is pictured as this spiritual weapon, right? Uh, imagine us in this spiritual battleground. And the word of God is like the sword we use to go forward, to gain territory, to fight in the spirit realm, to renew our minds. The Bible says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind in Romans chapter 12. And so the word of God is, is a clear way that we can get close to God. So we have to read it. We have to study it. We have to commit it to memory. I've committed hundreds of verses to memory, as you can tell from my talks. And so that's something I want to suggest in this video you had to um, spend time in God's word. As a um, theology teacher taught me once in India, I had a chance to go to India for a mission trip back in 2009. And there was a professor over there named Dr. Citron. And he says, we had a conversation about a lot of things when I was over there for two weeks. But one of the lessons he left for me that has never left me, and that was, uh, if we want to understand God's word, we have to log hours. Very simple, but it was profound coming from him because of the, the, the deep knowledge of the word he had. And so he was telling me, you know what, if you understand this person, you got to spend time in this. You can't be, you know, fly by night, five minutes here, ten minutes there. If you really want to understand God's word, there has to be a commitment. And that's not hard for a touch of people to understand. Anything that you're serious about, you spend time doing it. Whether that's developing music, whether that's developing your body, whether that's building a business, um, pursuing a new career, learning a new skill. Those of you who are getting involved in cryptocurrency, those of you who are trying to figure out how to get things going in terms of your relationships, right? Dating, whatever you are serious about, you spend a lot of hours trying to figure it out. And so the word of God has to be that important to us. Number three, you have to have a God consciousness. 
This was one of the marks of the Great, great Awakenings, revivals in American history. People began to have this unusual, newfounded awareness of the Most High God. That's what it means to have a God consciousness. For example, right now, as I'm talking to you, I don't see God with my physical eyes, obviously. But a consciousness of, as I look out on my outside recording this video, and I look at the, the sky and the tree right in front of me, and the trees, the skies, and the, the air itself, to me, is a clear reminder of the Creator, right? And so I, I live my life with this consciousness that God is real. I'm not doubting or wavering with that anymore. And no, I don't know, maybe he's there. No, 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 no. That's over with me at this point. He's up there. I don't care what nobody say, right? And that's the level we have to be at when we live our everyday regular lives with this awareness of the divine being. That's, that's crucial. The Bible says in Psalm 16 and verse 8, I have set the Lord before me always. He's at my right hand. That's Psalm 16 and 8. So what is he saying? He is saying that I, I'm living my life with the awareness that God is right here. Uh, imagine just, you know, thinking you're, you're in your car, you're at home or you're in your room. And imagine God just sitting down on a chair next to you. How would you feel? You will, you will be conscious of your, your conversation. How you live your life, the way you, you know, your thoughts, you, your whole awareness will be changed, right? You will be conscious of what you say, how you treat people, your motives, your actions, your conversation, your conduct. And so when we have this God consciousness, that has a way of keeping us close to God in a world that sometimes gets so dark. Let's be honest here for a second. The world is very dark. There are a lot of bad things happening. I made that clear in some of my previous videos. And so as it gets darker out here, and it will, I don't care what anybody says, as it gets darker, there will be an increased need, listen to me, for men and women who have the light of God in them. You're going to stand out. When it's dark, light stands out. Bottom line. So the worse it gets, the brighter you will shine. So for what that's worth to you, have that consciousness of God in your day-by-day -day life. Number four, confess your sins. This has been referred to as the Christian bar of soap by many theologians. That's 1 John 1 and verse 9. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we want to be close to the most high God, we have to get into a habit of confessing our sins. As I've been taught by many people, Get into a habit of keeping a short sin account. You want to make things right between you and God. And that will keep you close to him. We can't do things that are dishonoring to God. And then act as if we didn't do it. And just continue to pray, read the Bible, live our lives as if everything's okay when it's not. Number, not, number five. Sorry, number five. Getting close to God is the result of a diligent search. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 teaches us that when we search for him with our whole heart, then we shall find him. And so a getting close to God happens when you are diligently seeking after God. The Bible says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him in Hebrews chapter 11. So when we diligently seek God, we make this a habit to read the word every day, to pray consistently, to you know, fast from time to time. Some things come only by prayer and fasting, to confess our sins, to spend time in praise and worship. Sometimes it's not about just asking God for something. Sometimes it's just spending time acknowledging who he is. And that's what worship is all about. We have to acknowledge the creator. And I think we don't do enough of that, to be honest. Just really sometimes just standing in awe of this divine being. And that's something that we should be convicted to do. And so worship and adoration is not something we do out of a, um, a slavish type of relationship or this, this robotic form of worship, but out of a true sense of, wow, I'm impressed. I'm in awe of this being. This is God. I'm, I'm impressed. I have a respect for this. That's what it means to fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It means you respect God. You have a reverence for his power and his being and what he wants to be done. And number six, last but not least, when you trust God, you will get close to God. 
When you trust God, you will get close to God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And so trust comes through, of course, conversation, which is prayer, understanding the word, practical experience. Think of it this way. When Jesus picked the disciples, and I'm going to end with this piece right here. When Jesus picked the disciples, what did he do? He, he sat them down, first of all, and he taught them, right? That's the first thing he did, Matthew 5. He sat down and gave them teaching. What happened second? Jesus says, you know what? Let's get in this boat, <laughs> right? I want to see what you do when something bad happens. Amen, somebody. I've been there too. You, got, you know, God's going to talk to you. I've, I've been through this because I'm going through this right now. God got me in this boat. He put me through this test. That's why I'm laughing. I'm going through a test right now in my life. This is real to me, by the way. So God has me in this boat, the water getting in there. And so he said, let me, let me see what Percy does. <laughs> right? And that's what you're going through right now, too. You're going through a test. And that test is, is God, wanted to, God wants to know, do you trust me? Do you trust me, Peter, to walk on water? Or are you going to let this storm and the, what you see around you Bring fear to your life. And after God gives you a test and you pass that test, you didn't surrender. You say, God, you got me. I'm going to do what you want me to do. You say like the prophet, here I am, send me, the prophet Isaiah. You begin to say, he may I decrease that he may increase like John the Baptist. So God begins to teach you his word. He sends you through a number of tests because you're not going to have one of them. Let me tell you about that. You're going to have a bunch of them. And then he will begin to bless you when you pass those tests. And he begins to see that you truly do believe in him. And it leads to your mission, your assignment, whatever that may be. So for this work to you today, that's six ways you can get close to God. I trust that would add some value to your life. If so, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Share a verse you've been reading this week that may encourage somebody else, that may give someone else some guidance. Let me know if there was a particular point that really reached you and why it was important to you. I want to know what you think about this. So take care. Be blessed. This is your brother, Arnold So. God bless.